Avery and the Ultra Ball here to tell you, you know how you can get free wins on Dueling Nexus? Ha <laughs> ha! Let me tell you. Exchange of the Spirit isn't programmed right, so you know what happens when you play it? You get this happy horse shit. <laughs> Make sure to smash the ever living crap out of that subscribe button so we can get to 800 and eventually 998.9, 1,000 subscribers. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for all the support that you've been showing on the channel. I'm sorry I haven't been uploading every day as I have been for a while now. I've just been so busy with life and, <clears throat> excuse me, dealing with uh, the broken window in my car. Luckily, it is all fixed. Everything is good. I'm going to get the tint replaced. Everything is good, and I really hope that they catch the motherfucker that decided to bash out my window on my Dodge Challenger, my sports car of all things. Or, if he has a Starlight Rare Appalosa, give that to me and we'll call it even, Pimp. So, let's talk about Exchange of the Spirit. You know, I've been sort of taking a break from competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! for a few days now, actually almost about a week, just because of the fact that when I very rarely get my invite, not necessarily top an event, I understand that many people say that's just top eight, I'm not going to get into that, but just... Whenever I very occasionally, very rarely, I should say, get my invite, I'd like, or even go to a big event in general, I like to take a break from competitive Yu-Gi-Oh, especially near the end of a season when we're about to get like nationals and all these other big championship things. If I know I'm not going to these events, I like to just take a break and just play more casual decks, play retro formats. Like I was just playing GOAT format yesterday with my dad. I was playing Chaos, he's playing Burn, and it was just a good old time. But what I also like to do is Focus on what's going on in the OCG and what we could be seeing going forward into our metagame. Now, unless you've been living under a rock, you know that Power of the Elements is going to be a huge powerhouse, no pun intended, of a set. I would argue that it would be the equivalent of Burst of Destiny, where when Burst of Destiny came out, we got Sword Soul, we got Flunder, we got the beginnings of Albaz, uh, and then of course once we got Dimension of Chaos and the Structure Deck, the deck just took a whole form of its own, becoming a tier one deck really right out of the structure deck box. And I think, actually, I know for a fact that we're going to see something similar with Power of the Elements, but not just with Splite, but with tier elements. Now, tier elements, if you're not keeping up with the OCG, was for a while the second best deck, a very close second best deck with Splite. Splite was over 50% representation, it was tier zero, and now that they have their ban list hit, plus they have the new, and I'm going to try and say this without getting tongue twisted, Ishizu Ishtar support with the Aigido, the Sentry Statue, and the Exchange of the Spirit cards, right? Well, now that Splite has been hit and Totally Awesome has been banned and Halky Fibrax has banned and all that, the Tier Elements cards have now become the next best deck, the next Tier Zero deck, whatever it is you want to call it on over there. Well, with the milling cards and the combination of Exchange of the Spirit, the deck is fucking nuts, ladies and gentlemen. And not just nuts and like, oh, it's going to build a big board. No, no, no. It's going to mill your deck out because the Aigido can mill five from both players' decks. And then if Exchange of the Spirit's on the field or in the grave, then it's going to mill another five from either player's deck. And it's, it's absolutely insane. Now, the deck has a huge learning curve. And I would argue that it makes Prank Kids, both pre-Meow Meow Moo and post-Meow Moo, very easy to play in, in uh, perspective. Like, Tier Elements is confusing as hell. I've been trying to learn the combos for the past day and a half. And it's insane what that deck is able to do. Like, you can... You can, like, send off Herald of Orange Light during the opponent's turn to negate a monster, but if you send Aigido, you can mill five, and then you dump a tier elements, then you can fuse from the grave, and then you just get, like, all the cards in the world, and you just give the opponent two middle fingers, and you win the game. Like, it's it's fucking bananas. Like, it's it's insane. <laughs> and, of course, the deck can play a Shadal package of, like, two beasts or whatever cards you want to play, and then fuse from the grave and make Winda. Like, it's... It's nuts. It's insane. I don't know how. I don't know why, but it's a thing. <laughs> um, on top of that, too, if you, I guess, don't want to lose in Dueling Nexus, you can do what I did last night when I was playtesting with my dad, where I went to go activate Exchange of the Spirit, and it resolved. And yeah, like we saw at the beginning of the video, I got a blue screen of death on Dueling Nexus. Now, I thought I crashed all of Dueling Nexus. No, no, no. I just crashed the game that I was in. 
Um, but I noticed too, that at the beginning it said like card error function, like three times in a row. So I'm like, well, what's that about? It must be because I'm playing OCG cards. Maybe they're not programmed correctly yet. Well, exchange of the spirit ain't programmed at all, Pim. Like it just don't work. You activate exchange of the spirit and it just ends the game. It just crashes everything. So if you're about to lose and the opponent can't negate exchange of the spirit, just play that. And then when it resolves, you just get a blue screen of death. <laughs> So I don't know if it counts as a loss or a win or anything for either player, but it's just something that you should keep in mind moving forward, especially if you're going to be playing in the OCG format with the OCG cards and things like that. Um, but in regards to Yu-Gi-Oh! as a whole, I do think that the, that the format is in a healthy state pre-Power of the Elements. I really do think, though, that once Power of the Elements does hit, you're going to see people playing tier elements even before we get the milling ishtar cards because we don't know when we're getting those right like they're not going to be in power of the elements they were in the ocg duelist pack pyroxene but for us you know pyroxene hasn't been announced as a side set for us so they could dump those cards into like a tin a side set like we just we don't know right now maybe they're in battles of legend crystal revenge which would be absolutely insane because then you know tier elements is going to be at their absolute maximum power um but it's something that is just good to look at whenever, you know, you have your invite or you know that you're not going to nationals. It's good to always look forward so that you can prepare for what's to come. That's why I've been playing a lot of Splite. I've been attempting to play tier elements uh, just so that I know how these decks work. I did it when Branded was over in the OCG and it was a tier one deck. You know, this is how you keep up with the metagame and this is how you get the jump on people who aren't as prepared as you are you know you walk in day one with a tier elements build that is ready to go for the meta you're gonna pants people if they don't know what it does or if you have a good solid build right out of the gate and to me it makes me wonder will konami hit anything on our ban list that will get obviously a little bit after power of the elements comes out because at that point i believe that our nationals will be right around the corner or will have, no, it will have just happened uh, because it's going to be near the end of the upcoming month in July. Then the following month we get Power of the Elements. Um, it makes me wonder if we'll see any hits to future-proof things like Splite or even especially Tier Elements going into the next ban list. You know, whether it's they, I don't think that they're going to ban Exchange of the Spirit because the card in of itself is really not that broken. It's the things around it that make it much better uh, than what it is with the errata. Um, but it makes me wonder if we'll see any future-proof hits like Konami used to do back in the day where they would hit cards to future-proof decks because they had that date that they had to hit. Like, you know, February 15th is when you get your next balance. Okay, here's some things that we'll hit to hopefully make things better in the future, whereas they got rid of the date and all that stuff. Um, but it's where we are in the format right now. I think it's a very good time to be playing and to be learning, especially if you're new, and to also realize how healthy of a format we're in yeah people are tired of playing against branded yeah people are tired of playing against sword soul that happens every single format that's not going to change people get tired of the top decks every format it i've seen it so many times it's it's ridiculous but in regards to it being healthy with so much deck diversity you know obviously there's going to be other decks that are better than others but that's with every format but to have the number of decks that you can pick from and play and see success with them if you play test enough and know your matchups you're going to get rewarded for it. But when Power of the Elements comes around, when all that shit starts hitting the motherfucking fan, you are going to see shit go off. You're going to see Splite just out of nowhere taking over everything. You're going to see tier elements, especially whenever we get the Ashiju, Ishtar, Exchange of the Spirit stuff. It's going to come up as a top deck because that stuff is absolutely insane. But let me know down in the comments if you want to see a deck profile of tier elements i have a build that i've been working on for a little bit trying to learn the deck and things like that because like i said it really is it's confusing as fuck and uh, i'm not going to try and sugarcoat it and know what i'm talking about but i want to learn it so i can at least you know be up to date with what is going on so guys please let me know what you think down in the comments um you know, I do think that minus Mystic Mind, I think we're in a really healthy format right now. And it's definitely the calm before the storm that we are going to get with Power of the Elements. I'm buying a case of Power of the Elements and Tactical Masters, even though that got delayed. So expect that on the channel and just expect some some craziness to hit the fan when that set comes out. Because it's, it, it's, it's going to be a burst of Destiny set. I'm, I'm calling that now, especially if our Starlight Rares are just absolutely amazing. So, guys, please let me know down in the comments what you think. Uh, like I said, go on Dueling Nexus and have fun with the Exchange of the Spirit if you uh, 
if you want to get some free wins or not lose or whatever you want to call it. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video.